Uh, thank you so much for coming to my presentation. Uh, the presentation is going to be online integration success stories. So, uh, how do you want to actually experience a success story? So here are some simple steps. So, uh, you first of all install a code, uh, a Clubber Online Development Edition on a dedicated server. You set up the SSL for your server so that uh, like it is all uh, safe and everything when people are actually accessing that. Uh, install the integration between your document storage and the online. Or of course, like uh, if you uh, do not have an integration for the uh, for the online, uh, you can create it yourself. Uh, you implement first the REST endpoints uh, in the uh, in the uh, document storage and then. Uh, you modify your web app so actually uh, that you can see the online inside the uh, inside the web app, and then you enjoy the success. So that's okay. simple. But sometimes, sometimes it's not that totally easy because like you might need some special needs uh, in your in your application uh, that are not like 100% covered by the online. So in that case, uh, like you would like to. Uh, like do uh, something additional in the online so that like it works flawlessly for you. So have a look like what we have done uh, for some of these people. So Alfresco, Alfresco Collector uh, was announced uh, just yesterday by Philippe Hamlet at this conference, uh, so that it's possible to use the online for the uh, for the editing in Alfresco, and they actually had some additional. So their initial need was that they have like several nodes uh, of the online uh, that they need to monitor, and they need some central place like where they are collecting the logs and, and see the events like uh, files open, files closed, um, stuff like that. So um, and it's also supposed <coughs> to kill documents and stuff like that. So. For that, uh, we have implemented support for this monitoring. So uh, the Clubbera Online, uh, in the configuration file, you can specify like to which server um, we should be sending uh, the logs that are, sorry, not logs, but the commands that normally are going to the uh, to the admin console. And so, like, there's one central place that can actually like um, uh, collect these admin console's um, calls. Uh, and aggregate that from several nodes and do something with them what is what is necessary. So it was for them. So eGroupware. eGroupware, many thanks to them uh, for creating uh, creating the, the connector. And uh, they had some additional uh, needs as well. Uh, so for them, uh, the printing in Firefox was uh, was inconvenient. Uh, like in in Chrome, it was working so that like. Printing in general in the in the uh, in the uh, web browser uh, has to be done so that like it is first exported uh, to PDF and then the user actually downloads it and prints it from the PDF. So that's that's how it has to work from the from the web browser. Uh, but in Chrome, there's some additional support that like you can see um, like the, the printing dialog and the preview of the PDF uh, because like uh, it is possible to tell Chrome. That actually, like this PDF is intended for uh, for printing. Uh, in Firefox, uh, we have previously used only the normal uh, download thing, uh, which was not convenient because the users actually didn't know what to do with the files. So, like we have uh, extended that so that it is more convenient, and uh, yeah, people were also happy. And also, they had some some additional needs in the Docker files. I think that they have even provided a patch, uh, which was awesome. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so the Docker files were updated. Everybody happy. Collab. Uh, so again, uh, these guys created the, uh, the the connector themselves, but uh, they had some special needs about the UI. So as you can see in the screenshot, uh, they had uh, some additional buttons that are uh, actually like outside of the. Uh, outside of the screen, uh, sorry, outside of the iframe, uh, where the where the Collabora online lives, and uh, in there, uh, like they needed, uh, they needed this this functionality that it uh, it is not like provided uh, like inside the iframe, but from outside. Uh, it is because uh, like one of the functionality they have is actually like uh, that. Um, 
one of the view is kind of a master uh, view, and these others are a bit like more uh, more uh, dependent on that. Uh, so like the master view has some kind of uh, possibility to actually close the other views, uh, which is which is a different need. Um, so yeah, we have added the the stuff for them so that they the, they could do that easily. And uh, yeah, everybody happy again. Next cloud. Uh, next cloud uh, connector was originally uh, developed by Collabora, but now um, uh, next cloud is adding uh, lots of features in there as well, which is awesome. And uh, like you can see where it lives, but uh, there are many features in the online that uh, uh, that were like necessary for the online uh, for the next cloud integration. Uh, so, for example, one thing was uh, specification of avatars, uh, so that like you can see uh, or you can define uh, from the from the next cloud how uh, how the user should be presented in the UI, and so in things like uh, comments in the in the uh, in the document, uh, you can see the, the picture of the user and that is the same as in the next cloud, and also. Uh, like you can see the uh, you, you can see the picture also in the list of the users. Uh, now, like recently, Nextcloud went even further, uh, so that like this list of users uh, is actually taken out of the uh, of the uh, iframe of the of the online, and it's that is presented directly in the in the toolbar of the Nextcloud, and uh, so. For that, we had to go in the integration even further. So we had to provide a way, like how to uh, get the list of the users, uh, how to actually communicate the, the changes in the uh, in the amount of users and, and stuff like that in the uh, in the next file bar via the post messages. Uh, then there was support for templates, um, so that like you can choose, like when you are creating a document, you can choose uh, one of the templates and. Uh, um, like which is again hosted uh, directly at the next cloud, uh, so like uh, it has to be like uh, uh, extended in the in this multi like uh, protocol. How how it is passed uh, to to uh, to the iframe and then how is it used internally. And uh, connected to that was hosting capabilities uh, because next cloud has to work even with older uh, uh, um, online instances. So like for this, uh, it was uh, invented a new thing, how to actually uh, tell, uh, tell the integration that something, uh, some feature, for example, this template source is available or not. Uh, so like they can read it as the first thing. In the JSON, they see like it is supported or not, and accordingly, uh, they, they present, uh, present uh, the UI to actually choose the templates. On cloud, uh, uh, again, originally uh, the integration was uh, was implemented by Collabora. Now they are featured from from Home Cloud as well. And uh, uh, for them, uh, the biggest uh, uh, like big need uh, was actually uh, watermarking. Uh, so uh, what we have implemented so far is that like uh, uh, the tasks uh, that are uh, that are uh, like that. All together, like compose the document. Um, these files, each of them can actually have a watermark, like a, a small sentence that says, "Okay, so this document is private," or I don't know, like whatever you need to, to do there. Uh, the problem is that it is not per view. So, like one, uh, the user who opens the document first, uh, like the, the watermark is uh, is applied according to that, but the next people who actually are connecting uh, to this to this document. See still this, the same watermark as the first person. So now we are working on this uh, uh, on, on being able to split that. So uh, so for example, like uh, each of the view can have like uh, the, the name of the user of that uh, of that specific view. So there's like just one document. Uh, many people see the same document, but each of them has uh, their own watermark. So that you will be able to track, for example, like who has leaked the information if you are doing this. Pideo is another integration. Uh, again, Pideo guys uh, did the integration themselves, um, and uh, uh, but uh, for them uh, to be able to 
to use that. Uh, like they were uh, generating uh, the token in a way that we didn't uh, actually expect previously. Uh, so, so previously, like we were, uh, we were um, somehow restricting uh, the the characters that can be used in the access token. Um, but for them, like we need to extend so that like the integration is easy for them, so that they do not have to like. Uh, recreate the way how they are actually creating the, the access token. So we have fixed that uh, uh, or improved, and uh, uh, they they could continue with the with the integration. Uh, Roof uh, uh, has uh, has their own uh, own connector implemented uh, by soft distribution, and again uh, there were some things that needed to be improved. So in their case. Uh, it was uh, safe as and uh, handling of the uh, of the full screen of the presentations uh, because of some security settings of the browser and communication with the iPad and stuff like that. So again, after being implemented, uh, all is nice. You can see the screenshot. So uh, that was like when you have your integration and do the stuff. But what actually you have to do to create a, an own integration? Uh, so to be able to create a, an integration, uh, you should a bit uh, under, uh, understand a bit like what is the general structure of, uh, of the integration. So basically the integration has to, uh, has to uh, like be composed from uh, uh, from two things. Uh, so uh, the, the things that are in green uh, that are uh, the things that the user sees, and blue is actually like yeah. Uh, so this one. So this is actually like your web app uh, that you uh, that you are presenting to the user, and you want to add uh, this iframe with the uh, with the online. Uh, editor. So that's like what, what the user sees. Uh, but to be able to do that, uh, like you, uh, your, uh, like our uh, online has to uh, has to uh, talk to the uh, to the online server uh, so that like it, it provides the uh, this is the thing that actually provides the editing, um, like the, where the LibreOffice instance lives and uh, and does the, the background job. Uh, but also has to has to provide the uh, the host uh, there, uh, which like uh, which uh, which uh, takes care of uh, of loading and saving the data uh, from your backend. So that is the backend part, kind of, and this is the this is the front uh, Getting some very uh, like uh, easy integration. Uh, basically needs just uh, three small things. So you need to uh, have a way how to actually download the file, like from your uh, from your uh, from your backend, uh, uploading back. Uh, so that's another endpoint. And there has to be uh, something that is called check file info that actually provides uh, the information about the file itself. So that is the thing. Uh, that uh, that uh, defines the uh, the file uh, name, file size, uh, and then like if you uh, if you want to go further, um, this is where you can uh, can provide the, the watermark. You can provide there some additional uh, additional options like how to which effect like how the uh, effect even the UI uh, of online that is integrated in your web app because you can for example. Uh, like uh, hide the save button very easily, or uh, forbid uh, uh, save or save uh, or save as function at the end, and things like this. So it is all all provided in this in this check file info by uh, by your integration. Uh, then you have to have uh, 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 some kind of uh, way of providing a security token. Uh, so. So that is uh, uh, because, like, when you have your web app, you already have some kind of authentication uh, for the user. Um, so that uh, the online has to has to use uh, the same thing in some way, uh, so that like we do not have to ask the user again, because it would be like extremely inconvenient when the user, like in your web app, clicks on a 
uh, on um, file, and when the file is being opened, uh, the user will be again asked for the uh, for the password. So this is to actually overtake that. So your uh, your integration somehow provides uh, uh, provides a security token that is then routed uh, through the through the online uh, web, uh, web part and the, and the backend, and then uh, it is used for the communication between uh, between the the get file and put file and, and check file file info and uh, like the online backend uh, for this uh, for this access of the files. Embedding uh, the uh, the iframe itself, uh, it is reasonably straightforward. Uh, what uh, is a bit unexpected um, when you when you are doing the, the integration is that uh, that you have to uh, you have to use post requests, uh, not get requests, when you are when you are actually embedding the iframe. Uh, it is because uh, like if it was a get request. Uh, the access token would be visible, uh, and at that time, like it would be, uh, it would be like not not really safe to to pass it this way. So, so like the, this initial initial request has to be uh, done by a post uh, to to uh, put to round trip the token safely. But then, like further uh, further communication, and then uh, it goes like uh, uh, mostly by the web socket and. And there are some get requests as well, uh, but uh, then these, these are not the problem anymore. So uh, this lists uh, the recommended steps. Um, just uh, a bit of a summary uh, and like what you have to do. You first add the uh, REST endpoints uh, to your backend. Uh, then uh, you implement the check file info endpoint uh, for the for the file name and stuff like that. Now you uh, can like create some small trivial uh, web page uh, that has a uh, that has submit button and uh, and uh, the URL for uh, for uh, for creating the uh, for, for creating the, uh, the actual content and then like uh, when you press submit uh, you should see that the uh, that the clover online uh, has, has been like triggered and it's tried to actually get the uh, get the stuff from the from your endpoint. <laughs> and when you get it breaking, uh, you integrate it in your web app the the way how how you need it. Um, so like you uh, you create the the iframe uh, most probably somehow dynamically uh, in JavaScript. That's the most usual way uh, how to do it. And uh, and then. Uh, of course, uh, the next step, uh, and at this stage, uh, you will you will see it like directly in your web app. Uh, you improve the, the REST endpoints so that they actually load the real files, um, not only this uh, fake hello world as the first thing. Uh, then, of course, you have to add support for this uh, uh, for this uh, access token, uh, an access token handling. Uh, so that uh, the user doesn't have to add, authenticate, and actually, like people cannot like just uh, load whatever whatever files you have there with authentication. Uh, the recommended thing for this is actually uh, that uh, the access token is more or less a random number, and the information like uh, which user and which documents uh, this belongs to uh, is a knowledge that you have uh, only in your backend. Um, like there would be a possibility that uh, like you somehow hash it with some strong hash and uh, use that for the access token, but I think like from my point of view it is better uh, not to expose it at all um, and uh, have it just just on your server because that way uh, like if the access token is just a random number then nobody will be able to guess just at all. And uh, yeah. Um, read, uh, read, load your data, and then uh, implement food files. So actually, like the updates uh, appear uh, in the in the repository, or sorry, in your backend afterwards. Um, if you uh, want to then uh, like tweak uh, the UI further, uh, you can uh, you can have some uh, some 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 improvements or uh, 
or changes in the UI without even touching uh, the online code. And uh, it is possible to add buttons or remove buttons about messages. Um, it is it is described so so like uh, over the time uh, there there are, like many messages added uh, that, that allow you to to uh, like modify the, the look of the online uh, when it is uh, integrated uh, in your app and uh, yeah uh, there's a post message API uh, which is uh, which is like both directions so for example uh, for uh, for stuff like um, this inserting button, you uh, you call a post message with uh, uh, with a message uh, with ID uh, insert button. But there are some interactions that are like more advanced. Uh, for example, uh, for say less, uh, you have to uh, you have to like uh, you first get a, a message that. Uh, your integration should, uh, should show a save as dialog uh, for the user for, uh, to, to, to uh, specify the name. Then the user, uh, when they specify the name, uh, the integration has to call back uh, via uh, like, uh, uh, another post message uh, that the user has finally provided the name. Uh, so in the online, like, we get this name and, and uh, finally provide the, the save as step. Uh, this just lists the uh, the, the um, possibilities like that are in the check file info uh, to actually like modify the uh, modify the UI. Uh, I don't think I will uh, be reading through that, but <laughs> I will allow you left your end to uh, to take a picture. But I will send you the presentation as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. If you have some special needs, partner with us uh, because we will have you, uh, help you uh, to develop like whatever uh, you need um, in addition to the stuff that is already provided. Uh, there are some additional uh, things that uh, for which I uh, like didn't have a specific partner uh, write down either because I cannot share the name or uh, yeah yeah because I should cannot share the name. And uh, yeah, so one was uh, extensions in the put file. Uh, so in the put file, um, when uh, it is it is performed against uh, against your backend, um, um, if the partner uh, needed uh, some additional uh, information about like what triggered uh, this uh, this action. So was it auto save or, or or was it like triggered uh, by the save button? And also uh, they needed information about if the uh, if the document was actually uh, at the time of, of saving if uh, it was modified by the uh, by the user or not. So now uh, they have some additional header HTTP header in the in the request. They can make accordingly in their integration and. Uh, uh, another thing uh, which was quite a big thing was uh, using another authentication mechanism. Uh, so it was not convenient uh, for this particular partner to actually use the access token uh, because they had some trouble to generate or adapting their code to actually generate one. So instead, uh, like uh, it is possible to uh, to pass some special header. Uh, where they are using their token that they, they need to, to process some different way. Now, so this was possible to add this and uh, uh, we also added some, some related uh, cookies handling. And of course like there are many small things that, uh, that uh, we have done, um, mostly bug fixing or you know, some small, small feature. Another big thing uh, that we have done uh, for, uh, for a partner, uh, so they had uh, very specific needs uh, regarding the, the PDF uh, handling. Uh, so, uh, so like that, this was uh, like how the PDF looked like when they, when they opened the PDF. It is because LibreOffice uh, normally, uh, like when you, uh, when you ask it to actually load the PDF, it, breaks it down into a draw shapes and opens it in the draw, uh, which
which was uh, inconvenient for this partner because they needed uh, like a very good fidelity of the PDFs. So, uh, so what we have done was that we have integrated PDFM, which is the library that is used uh, by by Chrome uh, for actually like showing the PDFs. Uh, it's it's very advanced uh, like rendering of the PDFs, and uh, so we have changed a lot in the core code actually to uh, to use the PDFs as, as pictures, and only after you. Uh, you want to uh, like modify it, uh, as, as shapes, then you you are able to break it into the shapes and uh, uh, and uh, use it, uh, and modify it the way you need. And uh, I've already told uh, uh, about the inserting a new document from template. It was uh, needed for the next cloud, uh, but because like it's uh, possible to uh, get a screenshot from them, there you have some additional information about that. So uh, you provide the template source uh, URL uh, in the check file info, uh, which uh, when you then open or try to uh, create, an, and then you uh, uh, issue the get file to actually get the uh, get the uh, to, to actually like open the file. But like uh, online, uh, at that case, see it's like there was the template source specified, so it first like starts the uh, starts the document from scratch. And uh, uh, using that, that specific template, and uh, uh, and then it is saved into the ID that is there. And to save uh, the 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 autosave then works just normally because like it's already created this document and all is fine. Hosting capabilities I have uh, talked about that uh, uh, earlier, so I'll talk more about that. And that is all. So well, my summary is. Use an existing integration if you can. You can. If you cannot, you are most welcome to trade them all. And if there's anything you are missing, uh, we will be most happy to hear what it is. Uh, we will then prioritize it and implement it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>